वेलकम टू एस एस टी कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स एंड कॉमर्स दिस इज एस एस टी एडुपीडिया टूडे सेशन वील टॉक अबाउट द टॉपिक दैट इज डिजाइन एंड एनालिसिस ऑफ अलगोरिथम ऑफ द कंसेप्ट दी स्टैक माई सेल्फ ज्योति सरदार सो दिस टॉपिक इज अबाउट द कंसेप्ट दैट इज कॉल्ड एज योर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर सो लेट एस फर्स्ट टॉक अबाउट वॉट इज योर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर सो अ डेटा स्ट्रक्चर इज अ स्पेशल वे ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजिंग एंड स्टोरिंग द डेटा इन कंप्यूटर so that it can be used efficiently array link list stack queue tree graph etc all are the data structures that stores the data in a special way so that we can access and use the data efficiently each of these mentioned data structure has a different special way of organizing data so we choose the data structure based on the requirement then let us see the data structure types there are two types of data structure first one the linear data structure second the non linear data structure the elements of the linear data structure are accessed in a sequential manner but the elements can be stored in these data structure in any order examples of linear data structure are linked list stack queue array the second type of the data structure is non linear data structure here the data is not arranged in the linear fashion example is tree and graph following are the advantages of the data structure first data organization so data organization basically says data will be organized in a well mannered fashion data will be organized in a well mannered fashion so as the second advantage is provided that is the data will be accessible in the efficient manner the, the next advantage of your data structure is reusability so once a piece of code is created similarly that piece of code is available to everyone to reuse next the advantage of data structure is abstraction so the concept that is abstract data type can be created by using the data structure let us now see the concept of stack which is called as the linear data structure this structure works in the fashion called as lifo that is last in first out principle stack has one end whereas the queue has two ends that is front and rear it contains only one pointer that is top pointer pointing to the topmost element of the stack whenever an element is added in the stack it is added on the top of the stack and the element can be deleted only from the stack that is top of the stack in other word stack can be defined as a container in which insertion and deletion can be done from one end known as top of the stack it is called stack because it behaves like a real world stack that is pile of books stack is an abstract data type with the predefined capacity which means that it can store the elements of a limited size it is a data structure that follows some order to insert and delete the elements that order can be lifo or filo last in first term now let us see the working of stack suppose we want to store the element in a stack let us assume that the stack is empty at the beginning we have taken the stack of size 5 as shown on the next page in which we are pushing the elements one by one until the stack becomes full so let us imagine this scenario since our stack is full as the size of the stack is 5 in the above case we can observe that it goes from the top to bottom when we are entering the new element in the stack the stack gets filled up from bottom to top 
when we perform the delete operation on the stack there is only one way for the entry and exit for the other end is closed it follows the lifo pattern which means that the value entered first will be removed last in the above case the value 5 is entered first so it will be removed only after the deletion of all the other elements okay so in this picture we have seen that the element that is inserted that is 1 then the next element that is inserted that is 2 on top of 2 3 is inserted on top of 3 4 is inserted on top of 4 5 is inserted so the element that is going to come out first is the value that is 5 and the element which is present on the top of the stack is going to be referred by using the index variable top now these are the standard stack operations first operation is namely push which says that the element will be inserted into the stack so we insert one by one the element into the stack if the stack is full then the overflow condition occurs the second operation is pop when we delete an element from the stack the operation is known as pop delete means we try to remove an element from the stack if the stack is empty means that no element exists in the stack this state is known as an underflow state the next operation can be performed is is empty it determines whether the stack is empty or not next operation is is full it determines whether the stack is full or not so these are the four operations generally are performed on the stack other operations like we cannot remove any element from the stack at any particular position okay because that is what is going to violate our condition our condition is what we can only insert or remove the element in the lifo manner so all these operations are generally performed that is push pop is empty is full okay so let us see how the push operation goes about so, so the steps involved in push operation are as all follows before inserting an element in the stack we check whether the stack is full if we try to insert an element in the stack and the stack is full then the overflow condition occurs when we initialize a stack we set a value of top as minus 1 to check that the stack is empty okay so when we say that we are going to create a stack the first step that is we are going to have a variable which is called as an index namely top and its value is initialized as minus 1 when the new element is pushed into the stack first the value of the top gets incremented that is top is equal to top plus 1 and the element will be placed at the position of the top the element will be inserted until we reach the maximum size of the stack so when we say that we are pushing the element into the stack we make use of the index variable that is top and we will push the element till our stack is not full next the pop operation following are the steps involved before deleting the element from the stack we must check whether the stack is empty if the stack is empty will not be able to remove or pop any element from the stack if we try to delete the element from the empty stack then the underflow condition occurs if the stack is not empty we first access the element which is pointed by the top once the pop operation is performed the top is decremented by 1 that is top is equal to top minus 1 
so see everyone here in pop operation also we make use of the variable that is index top so top is the same variable we use for removing the element and we decrement the value when we are saying that we are popping or we are trying to remove any element from the stack now the applications of stack are as follows so the first application that says referred as your balancing of the symbol so a stack concept is used for balancing a symbol for example let us see this program where we have a main declared which returns a value integer a curly bracket opened and in that we have two statements that is two statements that are going to print some value so first statement prints a value hello and second statement prints a value java t point on the screen as we know each program has an opening and the closing braces when the opening braces come we push the braces in the stack and when the closing braces appear we pop the braces from the stack therefore the net value comes out to be zero if any symbol is left in the stack it means that some syntax error occurs in the program so this is what is a simple example where we have taken into consideration the curly bracket which is the beginning of the program so once my program is going to begin okay there are certain we will say the nested blocks also will be there as a part of the main and those nested block are going to be the child elements of the main function so those child elements are going to be closed before your main statement closes so that condition we will take care by using the concept of stack by putting the curly braces that is opening curly braces and the closing curly braces inside the stack concept so that was the first application of the stack then the second application of the stack that says string reversal so when the string is supposed to be reverse for example the string is taken that is a welcome string we can store this string inside a stack one letter at a time and till the null character appears so after pushing all the characters we start taking out the character one by one till we reach the bottom of the stack so as said we will put the characters one by one into the stack so first the character that is going to be put up that is w then e then l then c on top of c we will have o on top of o we will have m and on top of m we will have the character that is e so the character that is going to come out first is e then followed by that m then o then c l e and w that's how we will achieve the reverse of a string that's a second application of the stack then the next application also says that undo and the redo operations so we can do the undo and the redo operations for example we have an editor in which we write a then b then c therefore the text written in an editor will be a b c so there are three states that is a first letter then a b next word and the third one will be a b c which are stored in the stack there would be two stack if in which one stack shows undo state and the other stack shows the redo state if you want to perform the undo operation and want to achieve a b state then we implement the pop operation so this is how we will have another use of the undo and the redo operation by using the stack next application is your recursion recursion means the function is calling itself again to maintain the previous state the compiler creates a system stack in which all the previous records of the function are maintained so when we say that a function is calling itself the function which is going to call itself is going to be stored inside the concept of stack 
that is the parameters that are present of the function and their return value everything is stored inside the stack and hence we use the concept of stack inside the recursion also which is a very important concept in many programming problems next concept that is dfs which is the one of the travel cell of the graph so in the graph we have the depth first search so in depth first search also we say we make use of the concept of stack so that the vertex that we travel we actually keep that vertex on to the stack and then by using stack we make sure that all the vertices are visited next application is expression conversion so the expressions are like infix prefix postfix all these can be converted by using the concept of stack for example if i want to convert the expression from infix to prefix i can do it very easily by using the concept of stack same way also the other expressions like infix to postfix or prefix to infix also for the evaluation of postfix expression we can make use of the concept of stack so that's all about the applications of stack now let us see the implementation of stack but again using the concept of array array is another data structure where we store the data in a linear fashion array has itself a drawback which says that the data will be stored of the similar data type the data will be stored of the similar data type so at one time i can store the data that is of the character data type or i can store the data of the integer data type or the float data type so over here the implementation that we are doing that is nothing but the stack concept using the array we are implementing so there will be an operation that is going to be performed that is four operations we are going to have that is push operation then followed by that we'll have pop operation and then is empty and is full so the first operation that is says that the push operation so when we are going to add the element into the stack i mean to say when you are going to push the element inside the stack we are going to make use of the top variable which we have just now discussed so at the beginning the value of the top will be minus 1 and when we say that we need to push the element we need to check the condition whether if the value of the top and the size of the stack if it is same okay what is it if the value of the top and the size of the stack if it is same then we will say that we will not insert any element but we will display some message which is message going to be like the stack is overflowing okay otherwise if the top value is not equal to n n is nothing but my size of the stack then i am going to put the element inside a stack by first incrementing the top value by 1 and then putting the element at the top of the stack so here stack is my 1d array okay and to that stack i am assigning the value at the top point so this is the push function the function is written in the language c the function except two arguments first is integer val and the second is the size of the stack the function does not return any element because we have to only put the data inside the stack so it doesn't return any value next we have to have the second function which is a deletion of the element or removal of an element from the stack here again we need to take care whether there is any element that is put up inside the stack or not so that condition we can check it down by using the top value to be minus 1 so that's the first condition that we check so if the stack is at all empty we will say that we will not be able to remove any element we will not be able to pop any element from the stack otherwise we will have to 
display the element we'll have to pop the element from the top of the stack and then we'll have to have a operation of decrementing the top value so the element that is present at the top of the stack we will remove that element and then the stack will be uh, then the top will be decremented by 1 this function again written in the language c and it returns the value that is the value that is present at the top of the stack okay so this is what is the implementation in as i said in language c and it is returning the value that is present at the top of the stack if the stack is not empty if the stack is empty it is going to return the value that is zero now there are few disadvantages also of the concept of stack that is one first disadvantage that is it is having the size that is limited see this size is limited because the implementation that i have discussed with you all that is nothing but the array implementation okay so the stack is implemented using array if we go for implementing the stack using linked list then we will not have this as a uh, drawback okay so first drawback is with the concept of array if you are going to implement the stack okay then the condition second says that chances of o stack overflow so creating too many objects on the same stack can increase the risk of stack overflow so there might be a chance when we say that we are going to put up too many elements and we are unaware of the stack size so it is going to overflow at one or the other point third straight away drawback which i have already said that is random access is not possible so the element which is present at any other location than the top i'll not be able to remove that element then next says that it's unreliable so when the variable storage is, gets overwritten okay when the variable storage gets overwritten then somewhere we will say that stack is not the correct structure that we are supposed to use then it will also have a drawback that is undesired termination so the stack will fail outside the memory area which might lead to or abnormal termination okay fine so this is all the concept of stack thank you one and all